So we're starting. I am recording this video. Well, actually, the session, so it's going to become a video. That's the idea. Um, it's our fifth session already, or also called session four. And last week we focused on arrays, multidimensional arrays, and loops. And I suppose you had lots of fun with that. Um, this week is also going to be lots of fun because we're going to talk about methods and access modifiers, finally. So after today, we'll know what public, private, protected, and no modifier means. And we can write methods. So our code can be way more structured after the session of today. But first, before we dive into that, let's have a look at the homework of last week. Um, I think it was a bit more than you were used to because you had to do way more lines of code. But let's have a look and see um, what you guys made out of it. So I'm moving on to our sample solution here and I'm going to grab the assignments ah good I have um, someone who's having a question already please tell me what it is so that's a lot of code Can you explain this code um, and the, oh you labeled two, loop so you oh, sent the, yeah the two okay, two and and uh, J to an NJ. Oh, okay. That's I, I yeah. would have expected your question to be about the labeled loops because we didn't discuss those. Um, let's just make a new Java class. So there's a okay. question about last week content. Let's discuss this first. Let's call okay. it. Okay. There we go. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. So your question is about what's happening here. Um, okay, so let me just... Rewrite this a bit. So if I see it um, correctly, there are two loops or at least two. Yes, yeah, so there's a for loop inside a for loop. <coughs> And they're using these labels and these labels, they're a bit weird. I never use them in my actual code, to be honest. Uh, no, wait, we didn't do this one. So let's reproduce this. So we have a for loop for what you're saying is i equals one i smaller than smaller or equal to three and i plus plus. Oh, and then there's an inner loop where we're having a J, which also starts at one. Same story. Three and then J plus plus. <coughs> and then they're saying if I equals two, <coughs> because this double equal sign that meant simply equals. Uh, okay. And if J equals two, I really forgot how to write or code today. So this is going to be a really good session. Um, oh. And then they say break out of the outer loop, I think. Yes. And then after this, if they simply inside this loop, they're printing what you're having at this moment. Um, I. Okay. Well, that's it. There we go. Um, and then they're having something extra. Um, you can label your code. So I can simply put in Mike here. And now this loop is called Mike. Mm -hmm. So let's call this one uh, Daniela. There we go. So this is really ugly, but you can do this. You can just give your loop a name. And you can use this to break out of the loop. So maybe let's give this a more sensible name. Let's call this uh, parents or no, let's call this outer. And let's call this one inner because this one is the inner loop. So we have the outer loop and we have the inner loop. And if we simply say break here, we are by default breaking out of the first loop. So we're breaking out of the inner loop in this case. Mm -hmm. If we want to be more dramatic and break out of the outer loop, we can specify the loop we want to break 
out of like this. In some languages oh. you say break two, meaning one, you want to break two up. Um, and here you, you can you can use names to break out of some other loop than the one you're actually in. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Oh, but what means it means no, what means means no. The and n. Oh this two equal the signs n. over here. This one. Yeah. So the meaning of this double equal sign is actually meaning if this condition is true and this other condition is true. So it kind of makes one condition oh. out of both conditions. Okay. Actually, a fun fact, you can also have um, this one and. with only one uh, single sign. And this is almost the same. But when this is the case, it's always going to check both conditions, even if it's already knowing that um, this one um, doesn't matter because this one was false. So this one actually doesn't really matter. So if you use a double equal sign, it will skip as soon as it finds a false one because it knows, well, the answer is false. I'm just going to continue. It's called, I think, the short circuits operator because <laughs> it's it's taking the shortcut, you know, as okay. soon as it sees the double sign. So double sign okay. is by default, makes more sense. Okay. Um, yes, so good question. This means uh, like this. All right, um, I'm going to uh, delete all this. I, there we go. Yes. Good. So let's go to our homework. Um, I think I said create a tournament object uh, as sort of the first assignment. So uh, let's do that. We create a tournament uh, like this, tournaments. Let's call it tournament equals new tournament. So that was step one of the homework, create a tournament object. Then there was another assignment, create team object. And I think we did this last session um, already. So this is one team object. Let's uh, create a, one other one. So it's gonna be very small competition. So this is going to be, as of here, team two. Refactor. So if you right click and you say um, refactor, and I put a two in there, I don't need to do all the typing again, since I'm very lazy, that's super nice. Um, so these are the, I don't know, the other space theme or something like this. Oh yes, and we had this thing. Well, we really don't need that. It was for last week. So we have two teams right now. And if we're gonna have a look at our tournament class, we see that it had a, a teams array. So now we can actually add um, or instantiate this array and add our teams to it. So let's do that. We can say um, tournament.teams equals new team. And then let's give it a length of two. And then we can say tournament teams um, equals team. And then tournament. Okay, so is this better if I zoom in a bit more? Teams one. Yes, good. And um, that equals team two. Um, so this was one way to do it. Clearly there are multiple ways to do this. We could have created an array of teams first and then assigned it to tournament teams. That would also have been fine. Oh, team two. Um, ah, and then I said something like loop over the teams and print the names of the players. So I didn't give any players to our team. So we would have to do that. Um, I don't know what about you, but I'm very lazy. So I'm just going to generate uh, in a loop some names for our players. Um, let's see what our team looks like. Team had a string player, so I clearly want that to be a player. Oh, players like this. Um, yes. 
only 11 players, if I am correct, or probably a bit more because you always have some spare players, but let's just uh, go for the 11 players right now. So I'm going to say four, because we did all these loops last week, right? So we should be able to do this. So for every team in our tournament.teams and four, um yes let's do that no yeah i'm just gonna say up to 12 4 int i equals zero i is smaller than 12 uh, i plus plus um what's wrong here Hmm. Oh, <laughs> forgot to give it a name. Um, right. <laughs> so you must give it a name, clearly. Um, so I'm going to say for every team, yeah, and then I'm going to make 12 player objects. But first, I'm going to say t.players equals uh, new player with length uh, 12. And then here I'm going to say t. Players i, because I'm referring um, to this one here, equals new player. Yeah, I can't take the shortcut. So let's say equals p. Then we need a p first. So there we go. p equals new player. Guess who has been writing so much Python this week? P dot uh, name equals. Well, let's give it a name. Um, let's use I to say player and then add the uh, player of, add the team name to it. T dot name plus um, then or, uh, or number like this. Do we understand that I have added players to all the teams in the tournament here? I did not add the number. <laughs> I'm so bright today. Like, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Leon. Yes. <laughs> yes, other things that are definitely going to go wrong. Or, or questions about the codes? No? All right, so um, yeah, so we added players to our teams and then one of the things was loop over the team and print the names of the players. So we're gonna do this again. We're gonna say for every team in tournament teams and for every player P in P dot players, we're going to say print P dot name. There we go. Um, okay, let's let's run this. So you see, I have two teams, and there's players here of Superheroes International. And they go from zero to 11. So we have one spare player <laughs> and we have the outer space team and they go from zero to 11 as well. So they also have one spare player. Questions about this? No. And then I, um, why do you write P dot name and not P dot team? Um, well, P is uh, referring to a player object and I want to print the name of the player. So I say for every um, team in the tournament print teams array. And th so then I'm iterating over each team. And then after that, I'm saying for every player in the players of that team here, print the name of the player. So I'm actually referring to this field. Any other questions? 
No, then I'm going to move on to the next point. Create game and score objects. Well, let's have a look at game. They're over here. Um, and they have a score. And the score consists of uh, points for home team and points for out team. So I'm going to, well, I'm going to, uh, what's the question? Ah, I'll, I'll get to that later. Um, so let's create um, two games, even though we only have two teams. So let's still create uh, two games. Game one, new game, and creates game, game two, which is also going to be a new game. There we go. And well, they both need score objects. So let's do it first. So we say score S1 equals new score. And score S2 equals new score. No, you say S1 points for home team. So, oh, that's a bit much, I think. Um, S1 points for our team. You say S2. So, um, S2 points for our team equals one. So I have a score one and score two, and I'm going to give score one to game one, and I'm going to give score two to game two. Like this. And then I said something, calculate the total number of goals using a loop. Um, well, I could clearly just make an array out of this, but if we're gonna have a look at our tournament class, we see that our tournament has a um, game array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, yes, let's just do it like this. I'm gonna say tournaments with games equals, and I'm using a different way to do it here, game one, game two. Like this, and I cannot do that because ah yes, because I have to. Yes, but I want don't want to all the typing. Uh, let's use it like this, and then I can say tournaments dot games is games. There we go, and then now I can loop over the uh, tournament games and get the score for each game get both the out team and the home team score and add them to some sort of variable to get the total score. So let's start with creating a variable for the total uh, goals, that is. Oh, and then I'm going to say for every game in our tournament, um, total goals, and I'm going to use this one, plus equals uh, game dot score dot points for home team. What's wrong with that? Oh yes, I did not say we start at zero. That's a fair point, because clearly it cannot do plus equals if it doesn't know what it is yet, right? I can say, would you like to add three to this and not specify this, because then you can really add three um, points for our team. There we go. So this plus e uh, plus is is the same thing as writing this, but clearly this is more typing. So I do it like this. And then here I can print the total goals. So yes, let's check that. And to that we have um, calculated the total number of goals. Did everybody manage to do this? Yes, good. Clearly, there are more ways to do this. So it doesn't mean that if you didn't write exactly these lines that you did it wrong. There are so many ways to do this. I uh, didn't get that far. Get some yeses. Oh, good. Um, some no's as well. <laughs> um, it's hard. Don't worry. Just keep on practicing. I've been doing this for over 10 years now. So 
it's uh, getting quite easy. And as you can see, even I, when I'm typing, I'm still making errors and stuff. So that's totally okay as well. Or at least I'm totally okay with that. Um, let's have a look at the topics that we have uh, set for today. And they're really going to make it much more fun to write Java because right now we have seen classes, we've seen packages, we've seen fields, we've seen primitives, we've even seen some control flow, for, um, flow statements like if else, the loops. But today we're gonna to discuss these methods and methods are very, very powerful to divide all the code in, in reusable blocks of code. So that's a very powerful thing to do. And then we're also going to talk about access modifiers and I think this might be the trickiest topic we've discussed so far, but at the same time, it's not that bad. So uh, I'm going to do my very, very best to make it as easy as possible. And let me know if you get stuck at any point or if you don't understand something fully so I can see how I can help you better. All right. So first, methods. Um, so methods, they're really block of goals that define some sort of action. Uh, there are a class member too. So they belong to some sort of instance or to some sort of class. We'll see the difference between that later. And we've actually been using so many methods already because there's quite some built in methods. For example, the print line statement we're using all the time, that's a method. Or the main that's on top of every application who want to run, that's a method too. And on the string class with all these methods, those are all methods. And methods actually only run when they are called. So if you write a method in your code and you're running the main, but you're not calling the method, it's only running the main method and not your method because you didn't call it. Um, so what do these methods look like? Well, here I have some syntax and this, yeah, this might look a bit weird, but it's first some modifiers and modifiers are built in Java words. We'll see today public, for example. Then it's giving the return type of the method and return type, it just means whatever the method is giving back. So if the method is giving back some sort of result of calculation, for example, an int, the return type will be int. And then the method needs to have a name so that you know what to use when you call it. And we typically start this name with a lowercase letter. So really do that because else, um, well, if you ever at some Java project, the other Java developers will get mad at you. Um, so start with a lowercase letter. And then there's always two round uh, parentheses. And these are to specify input parameters. But you also need them if you don't specify input parameters, because then you're just giving an empty parameter list to the method. Um, here's an example. So we have modifier public. It's, uh, it's giving an int back and it then says as a name add two numbers and then it needs two input parameters int a and int b. And then usually you would put this on a new line and this one as well, but I think I was just out of space on my slide. But here I'm saying return and this means it's giving something back. So this is corresponding with this one, return a plus b. So it's returning the sum of these two numbers. Here you see some more methods, um, apparently from a tiger class. We have a method hunt on top of this and it says public void hunt. Void means that it's not giving back anything. So even if it doesn't give anything back, you need to specify that by using the word void emptiness. Then you give it a name and then you give it uh, the round brackets and this method, this hunt method, it's not taking any input parameters and it's simply printing tiger hunting whenever it's called. Questions about this so far, please let me know in the chat. So here you see a slightly more complicated method because this one is with input parameters. So it's still void, it's public void catch prey. And then there's an input uh, parameter of type int called attempts. And um, we're using it in the print line statement. We're saying tiger trying to catch prey plus, and then the int attempt number of times. So if we, if we call this method with um, six, so we say, uh, I don't know, t dot catch prey, 
if our tiger was called T. And we give a six between the brackets. It's actually going to print tiger trying to catch prey six times. And then we have one more catch prey method. This actually cannot be in the same class because then it won't compile. If you have both of these in the same class, Java won't know what you mean when you call catch prey because they're both called catch prey and they both take one int as an input parameter. So Java, it would be too ambiguous for Java to know what you want to do. So this cannot be in the same class. Um, nonetheless, this one is returning a Boolean. So if this was the method instead, catch prey with a number of attempts, this method would have to return a Boolean because if it would not be returning a Boolean, it would actually give a compiler error because Java knows, because you said so here with Boolean, that it can expect a Boolean back. And if it's then not giving a Boolean back, this is uh, unpredictable. So you must make sure that whatever you say that it's returning, it is returning indeed, because else your code won't compile and you get these red lines underneath your uh, method definition. This is your method definition. Any questions about this? That's good. Then I'm going to move on to the access modifiers. And access modifiers, as I said already, they can be complicated to get your head around. So don't worry if you don't get it the first time. Um, but these access modifiers, they determine from what places you can access some sort of uh, class member or some sort of class even. Um, for example, we've seen public on a previous slide and public means that you can call it from everywhere inside the uh, application. But if it would be private, you can only call it from inside the same class. Then we have four flavors of access modifiers in Java. We have the public keywords, we have the protected keywords. When you don't have an access modifier, it's called a default um, level of access. And we have private. And they can be on uh, classes, on methods, on variables inside the class, so the so-called fields, and uh, on constructors, and we haven't seen those yet. So I have a table here from what places you can access what. Um, so first, let's start with public. And I'm saying you can access this from everywhere in the program. And you could do this with, for example, public int x. Then let's make the contrast to private, the one with the least access, meaning you can only access it from inside the class. And I'm going to show that to you. Let's open a test project. I managed to lose our project that we were writing for this course. I don't know how I did that, but skills, I guess. Um, So, no, this is good. So we have um, no modifier here. So I'm going to make this one public for now. And then in here, if I'm going to say dog is new dog, like this, I could say, and I can access name like this. We're gonna call our dog Java, like that. But if this field wasn't public, but private instead, it also immediately telling us one related problem. And this problem is we cannot access name here anymore because we made it private, meaning it can only be accessed from inside the dog class. So it can be accessed from there till there, because this is what all the code of the dog class is. And you can see here that um, we can use name inside our class, but we cannot use it outside our class. So that's actually the two easiest one. You have public, just access it from everywhere inside your program. And you have private, just uh, access from inside uh, your class. And this is the same for methods and it's the same for, um, for, for, property, for other properties like constructors, fields, um, inner enums, inner classes. It's all the same. So public, you can access from outside 
everywhere inside your program and private only inside the class. So those are the easiest. That means that now the two tricky ones are uh, <laughs> gonna come up. So let's start with default because that's the easiest one after these two guys. And in order to show that, I will need a new package here. So, um, so we're going to put our dog class inside sub. There we go. Uh, so let's make this one public again. So it's public and I can actually access it in my main again. But if I go here and I'm going to remove public and I have no access modifier, right now it has default access. And default access is, means it's only accessible from inside the package. And since this main is outside the package, I cannot access it when it has default access. Does that make sense? Let me have a look at the chat. Yes, clear. Ah, good. So if I would move this main inside sub, there we go. Then all of a sudden name would be accessible because I'm inside this uh, same package and default means package access. I'm in the same package, no problem. Yes? Yes, good. So we've seen three now, right? Public, exit from everywhere inside your program. We've seen private, only exit from inside your class. And we've seen default, access it from um, inside your package. Then we have one more, and this one more is protected. And protected is actually a lot like the default one. It means that you can access it from inside the, uh, the package. So right now I'm here in outside the sub package and oh, I'm going to refactor our main. And then you see when I'm in the same package, it's fine. It's not a problem. Um, I want to add a new class now, but not to the sub package. I'm, I'm going to do it like this. Um, let's make a Chihuahua. Looks weird, but I think I've written it correctly. Um, so this Chihuahua is outside or sub package, right? Um, and I'm going to make it extend dog. Did we do this already, extend? Looking at class. We didn't, huh? No, I don't think we did. Extends means that our dog class uh, is a parent from our Chihuahua class. And with parent, it means that it inherits all the fields and uh, methods, actually all class members that aren't private. Well, and also not the constructor. Um, Let's see. So here in this two hour class, if I would make a method, uh, what did he do? Do tiny dog stuff like this. I can now access anything that I have in my dog class that isn't private. So I could say um, bark. I think I had a bark in there. No. Oh yes, but then this should be public. So they are uh, default access modifiers and my Chihuahua is outside of the sub package. So it wouldn't have access to these methods. But now I've made them public so I can actually access them. So I can say bar and I could say sit. So, so default, no access, right? This is actually the very point where protected comes in. Because with protected, I would only have a package access but because I'm right now extending dog, so Chihuahua is a child class of dog, I do have access to these protected access modifiers. Does that make sense? So I can imagine this is difficult. I see some people looking confused. All right, let me try again. Yes, let me repeat this. 
So first is extends thing. Extends means that you're a child class of some other class. So in this case, a dog is the parent class, which makes sense, right? Because a dog is more generic than Chihuahua. So you can have a bunch of generic properties in dog. And by having kids, uh, child classes from dog, it, you're saying, well, this, this new class, this child's class, it's inheriting all properties from dog. And I'm adding some specific um, properties to it, making it a more specific class. So our Chihuahua has this very specific do tiny dog stuff method that doesn't belong to all dog um, instances. I can really imagine this is very vague, but this means by extending dog, my Chihuahua has access to anything in dog that um, is not private or actually is not default, depending on whether it's in the same package or not. So if I would move my Chihuahua to the sub package like this, then right now it would have access to the default ones as well. So weight and color. So I could print here, I could say um, color. I could just say color and because it's extending dog, it knows that I'm referring to this color. But it's default, meaning it has only um, access to this color property from inside the same package. So if I'm moving our Chihuahua um, up once, um, let's see. I want to move it up. There we go. It's warning me about the conflicts because now it's saying, hey, this color, I don't know this color because I'm outside the package. But if I make that color protected, it means it's inside the package and for all child classes. So even though I'm not inside the package, I am a child class. So I do have access to color right now. Does that help? Ha, polymorphism, I mean. Um, no, I don't, but we will discuss that next week. So let's have a look at the slide. Maybe I described it easy here. So you have public everywhere in the program and we have private only in the same class. Those were easy, right? You all agreed. And then we also had default, which is only inside the same package. And then actually protected is the same as default with one exception. And that is child classes in other packages. Does that help? I see some nodding which is very encouraging yes so people typing yes clear do i all think so some more yeses okay so so let me do some some questions to to see if you really understand it so I'm going to make a new class and it's going to be a bird because now, um, and, um, oh yes, this is good. And also a bit mean. So we have a feather class here and our bird, it has an uh, array of feathers. There we go. And it has a name and, um, it has an array of colors like this. And I'm kind of out of inspiration right now, um, but we have a bird and it has three properties. Oh, let's give it a, a meta two. It can sing, there we go. Oh, and then see, I'm, I'm on fire because they can have all different sounds. So we can just print a sound here in a loop or something. Um, go oh yeah i'm gonna make this even more fun let's do it like this mm. now you may wonder x where is that coming from well hold on there we go 
So we have a bird and we can call a method sing on this bird. We give it some sort of number and then it's going to, let's do this the right way, print uh, the sound of that specific bird a number amount of times. But that was not a point. The point was uh, access modifiers over here. So I have some methods and I have some properties and they have all no access modifier, meaning they have default access, right? So this is the default access modifier. Mm. Yes, and I'm going to make, uh, so I'm going to my main class, which is inside sub. And I'm going to create a bird here. So what can I access on this bird object right now? So if I type b dot, what will it show me? Will it show me any of the things that are in this class? Please type in the chat. So I'm getting quite some yeses and some alls and one no. Um, not one more no. That's good. So if you say B dot in here, I'm getting only these generic things and I'm not going to get any bird specific. And this is because main is in our sub package and bird is outside our sub package. And default means only inside the same package. So also not in sub packages of that very package. So really inside the same package and that doesn't mean that you can go inside the sub package. So this is why um, I don't see anything bird specific in here. But if I make it public, can I then see something over there? Make one protected. And this one, we're going to make it private. Um, and public. Yes, so some people saying, yes, you'll see the public ones and that's correct. So right now, if I'm gonna say pay dot, I see feathers and I see name. If I'm going to look here, feather and name, they are public and I should also be able to see sing because it's public too. Oh yes, and here it is, I see sing as well. So if I'm going to say sing, uh, I don't know, some number. So what will this do? This is actually a trick question. So let me go back to sing. Yes, it will loop the sing 56 times. And what will it print though? Aleon, you know, tell me. Empty string, yes, which is what exactly? Okay. Let's default value, which is <laughs> uh, no, it's nil. There we go. <laughs> That's fun, right? Uh, so no, 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 there we go. Um, so then we would probably want to, yes, because I didn't give the value, the default value then is N -U, uh, N U N L L. And I can actually not set the value from outside or class, right? Because, well, um, oh, well, clearly not there. Because sound is not accessible because I made it private. <laughs> um, so if we go to bird over here, I can set the sound here. I could give it a, a default value even. That is tweet. So if I run it now, it will print tweet 56 times. Or we could simply say, well, um, we just set the sound over here. It's not C sharp either. Uh, string sound. And then in here, I'm going to say dispun sound equals sound. And I'm referring to this one with this one. So I'm saying this class is sound, make that our input sound. And then right now, if I am going to go to our main method and I'm going to call this sing method, I can um, 
at the sound that our bird is making. And I can run it. There we go. Yes, and if I would, um, no, if I wouldn't add this, it won't work. So with this, it's simply not recognizing the correct sing method. Um, if I would remove all this here again, then yes, it would work. So I would make it this, it would simply print tweets. Yes, so if I would run it like this, it would just print tweets. There we go. Um, oh, someone is asking me. Um, no, we'll see that later. The this keyword later, as in next week, I guess. Um, so now we have seen default, protected, and private. There's one more, a tricky one. Oh no, wait. We've seen um, we've seen default, private, and public, and now we have the tricky one, protected left. So I uh, only have protected colors in here. And protected, if you remember correctly, it meant package access and child classes outside the package. So if or bird um, were to get a child bird, uh, I don't know, parrot, and then would extend bird. Um, I could give it a method. What would it do? I don't know. Talk. There we go. Um, and it would say, I don't know. Um, look at my colors, because I think color was the one that was protected, right? And I can access colors because it is protected. If it wouldn't be protected by default, it would be a problem because I could not access it because I was in a different class. So I'm going to make this protected again because it was in a different package and a different class. Um, here, this one, if it wasn't extending bird, it was a problem. Um, well, because I wouldn't know what colors I was talking about. But also if I were to uh, create uh, a parrot in here, I still wouldn't be able to if I were to create a bird in there, I wouldn't be able to access colors because colors was of my uh, parent class. And it was default. So if it's protected, you can access it uh, from inside the child class, outside the package. Does that make sense a bit more now? Yes. Any questions about all the things I've said today? Because I've been talking a lot. No? Then it's going to be your turn really soon. Um, why would you use it? That's a really good question. Um, you don't want to have, for example, uh, sensitive things um, accessible from outside your class. So you would make those private. And you can avoid um, accidents this way. So um, malicious injections, they couldn't change stuff because they wouldn't have access to it. And also you want class to have control over their fields and properties. So next week we'll see that actually all the properties inside your class, you have to make them private and only modifiable with um, public getters and setters. Actually, you can get them with public getter and you can modify them with public setter if needed. We'll look at that into more details, but it's a really good question. Um, I will post this session on YouTube as soon as it's ready. And I will post short clips about both methods and access modifiers on YouTube. So you can have a look at those again if you need a, a refreshing. And I'm going to put the homework and some other links that are really good reads uh, about these topics below the video. Any questions? No, clear, good. Then I'm going to wish you a lovely weekend. And if anything pops up, let me know um, below the videos on YouTube or uh, post it inside our chat group. Yes, all right, <laughs> bye guys.